Hello and welcome. We are live from New Delhi. You're watching DD India Live, India's Voice to the World. I'm Abhishek Mahajan. Coming up in the next 30 minutes. Several explosions heard in Tehran. Israel says conducting precise strikes on military targets in Iran. Ukrainian President Zelensky snaps UN Chief Antonio Guterres after his Russia trip. Official says Russian withdrawal needed to establish peace. The nine days to go for US presidential polls campaigning at its peak. Kamala Harris rallies on abortion rights as Donald Trump moderates in final election push. Nature's fury continues to batter lives across the globe. Tropical storm Trami killed 76 people in Philippines, while heavy rainfall in India's eastern coastline due to Dana. An India squad for Australia tour announced Kuldeep Yadav and Akshar Patel not included, while Mohammad Shami misses out three uncapped players named. So explosions were reported over Tehran as Israel launched retaliatory airstrikes against Iran early on Saturday. Israel Defense Force said it is conducting precise strikes on military targets in Iran. Israel further added that it has the right and duty to respond to attacks from Tehran and its proxies. The recent attack against Iran was in response to the ballistic missile barrage carried out by Iran on October 1st in which around 200 ballistic missiles were fired at Israel. In response to months of continuous attacks from the regime in Iran against the state of Israel, right now, the Israel Defense Forces is conducting precise strikes on military targets in Iran. The regime in Iran and its proxies in the region have been relentlessly attacking Israel since October 7th on seven fronts, including direct attacks from Iranian soil. Like every other sovereign country in the world, the state of Israel has the right and the duty to respond. Our defensive and offensive capabilities are fully mobilized. We will do whatever necessary to defend the state of Israel and the people of Israel. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was also following the attack on Iran from the operation room at the Israel's Defense Ministry in Tel Aviv. Netanyahu was also accompanied with Israel's Defense Minister Yov Gallant and Israel's military chief Herzi Halevi. Meanwhile, National Security Council spokesman of White House Sean Savitt has called the strikes on Iran as an exercise of self-defense. Whereas, according to a U.S. official, the United States was notified by Israel ahead of its strikes on targets in Iran, but was not involved in the operation. All right, my colleague uh, Amit Mukherjee has more information on this. Is uh, joining us live. Uh, Amit, uh, Israel starts retaliation attack on Iran, and several blasts have been reported. Fill us in with more details. Well, Abhishek, much on the anticipated lines. In yeah. fact, Israel was preparing for this uh, after the 1st October attack on its uh, territory by uh, Iran. If you recall, about 200 uh, ballistic missiles were fired into Israeli territory directly from Isa Iran's uh, soil. So this was in the offing. And uh, in fact, we, uh, we have been seeing various statements, in fact, two days back, also, Israel responded saying that when Israel attacks, the world will uh, watch its mind. So, and the, but but at this point in time, what remains to be seen, what is the nature and the extent of attack on Iran? As of now, Israel says that it's conducting precise strike on the military sites of Iran, uh, which means that uh, in, in a way, it's trying to clarify that at this point in time, it's not touching the oil <coughs> and nuclear installations of Iran. Again, Iran yesterday had said that uh, it would see the extent of Israeli uh, attack and then it would mount its uh, response based on what Israel does. 
So as of now, Israel has clarified that it's only attacking the military sites, which means that the nuclear sites and oil installations will be left untouched. But again, uh, you know, uh, nuclear installations means it can be used for civilian as well as for military purpose. So we'll have to wait and see what is the kind of uh, strategy that Israel deploys in mounting its attack. But as of now, Iran is under attack by Israel and also uh, it has spilled over, it is not restricted to just Iran, even certain sites, military sites, Iran, uh, according to reports, Syrian military sites have also been attacked. Mm. So, uh, as uh, uh, you know, again, Israel clarified that uh, after months of attack from uh, Iran and its proxies, which lasted for over a month, over a year now, so it started since October 7th, uh, uh, Iran has been attacking along with its proxies at seven fronts, uh, as far as Israel is concerned. And this is a response in retaliation to that, Abhishek. Mm, they're calling it as retaliatory strikes and uh, calling it self-defense also as far as Israel is concerned. But the statement has come from the United States also. Uh, Amit, if you see, uh, they're saying that they're they notified by Israel ahead of its strikes on targets in Iran, but also clarified that they are not involved in the operation. Again, you know, it's again a very, very calibrated approach which all the countries are adopting. Now, uh, again, uh, uh, yesterday Iran had clarified that if it's just a symbolic attack, uh, which now it seems, uh, I mean, all these statements try and kind of uh, uh, restrict it to the fact it's only attacking those military installations and, and uh, you know, launch pads which have been used for the attack on, on uh, Israel. Uh, over the last uh, few weeks and also over the over the last one year, in fact, uh, uh, so there have been several occasions. But Iran, by and large, have stayed away from directly attacking Israel. It was only on October 1st, after you know Nasrullah uh, was the Hezbollah chief, uh, who he was assassinated. Did Israel uh, did Iran retaliate with the barrage of missiles? So as of now, let's uh, we'll have to wait and see what is the extent of. Uh, 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 of attack that is Israel is currently planning to mount on uh, Iran and uh, accordingly things will work out. And uh, where do you see... But at, uh, the, but at yeah, the same yeah. time we must not forget that there has been an effort of ceasefire which the US is very, mm. very, uh, uh, you know, emphatically pushing for. In fact, US uh, 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 St Secretary of State Antony Blinken current, currently is uh, look, uh, he's, he's, based in uh, Middle East, where he's, uh, he has been talking with all the negotiators and all those who have been involved in this year-long war. So, uh, it's a very, very sort of a um, critical situ situation right now out there. And we'll have to see what actually happens as the day proceeds. Uh, Abhishek? Do we have more information on the uh, reactions, uh, Amit? And also, uh, as we know, uh, I mean, Iraq suspends flights under, until further notice uh, due to uh, these tensions. And also, Israel says it has the right and duty to respond to attacks from Tehran and its proxies. Do we have any more reactions? And also, uh, where do we see the West Asia crisis going? Uh, Abhishek, again, if you would recall a couple of days back, uh, Iran had also categorically stated that it doesn't really war, want a war at this point in time. Hmm. And it would only retaliate to Israel if the nature of attacks are very, very severe. If it's just a symbolic attack, Iran would refrain from going in, going all out, uh, you know, uh, attacking Israel. But if it's just a symbolic attack, uh, then it might uh, we might see a very sort of a muted and calculative response uh, to that. But again, it's it, it, it's only again when Israel is saying that it's launching its attack only on the military side. Now even nuclear sites are used for military purposes. We'll have to see what kind of uh, you know uh, targets uh, uh, Israel is currently you know uh, targeting right now. Shek? Hmm. And any uh, comments from Iran? We have seen uh, Israel uh, saying that these are retaliatory attacks. Any comments, uh, any immediate comment from Iran? No, I mean, at this point in time, uh, there are still not, it's not very, very clear as to the, what exactly has been the uh, response of Iran is. Of course, US and uh, uh, Israel has definitely clarified this position. US has said that it is not involved in this war directly. That's what the statement means. And Israel has also clarified that it's mounting attacks only on military uh, sites which have been used for relentless attacks over the last one year on its territories. Vishek? Mm. All right, uh, Amit. Uh, uh, we'll leave it at that for the time being. But yes, we'll keep taking updates from you.
All right, updates now on Russia-Ukraine conflict. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has rejected a plan for the UN Secret Secretary General Antonio Guterres to visit Kiev due to his attendance at BRICS summit in Russia. After attending the summit, Guterres had wanted to visit Kiev, but Kiev was enraged by Guterres' appearance at the summit. His handshake with Russian President Vladimir Putin and spending UN Day on the territory of Russia. Deputy UN spokesperson Farhan Haq said Guterres discussed a visit to Ukraine with Zelensky when they met in New York in September. Since then, the UN and Ukraine have been trying to work out a mutually convenient time for a visit, but nothing had been decided. A Russian drone strike struck a multi-story residential building in the Solomyansky district of Ukrainian capital Kiev on Friday. The official said that the fire triggered top floors, specifically 17th to the 21st stories, were damaged, killing a person and injuring five people. A footage from Kiev City military administration showed firefighters tackling the fire in the building. The head of the capital's military administration said more than 100 residents were evacuated from the building. And on the final day of the BRICS summit, Russian President Vladimir Putin said Ukraine is being used to create strategy threats to Russia. Ukraine is one of these examples. It was used and it has been used for creation of strategic threats for Russia, ignoring at the same time our vital interest fair concerns and infringement of rights or Russian-speaking people. And now, they don't even hide the goal to defeat Russia in a strategical way. I must say that this is illusion. Who can have only those who doesn't know Russian history, doesn't pay attention to unity formed during the centuries, power of spirit and solidarity of its people. And United States presidential candidate Donald Trump held a campaign event in Austin, Texas on Friday to tout his policies on the U.S.-Mexico border. During his speech, Trump accused the Biden administration of leaving the southern border open to migrants, while Harris has pushed back against that by blaming Trump for pressurizing Republicans in Congress to veto a bipartisan border security bill that would tighten border controls. If we don't win this election, we're going to go to Venezuela next year, Ted, and we're going to celebrate there because it's going to be much safer than our country, okay? Is that a deal? We'll all go together. No, it's just so bad. Well, I have to tell you, I'm not supposed to say it, but we are winning by a lot, actually. I'm addressing the media ahead of a rally in Houston on Friday, U.S. Vice President and Democrat presidential candidate Kamala Harris said she will focus on the danger former President Trump and Republicans could present to abortion rights across the country. I think, again, the President of the United States should be someone who elevates discourse and talks about the best of who we are and invests in the best of who we are. Not someone like Donald Trump who is constantly demeaning and belittling who the American people are. Meanwhile, thousands gathered ahead of Kamala Harris rally in Houston on Friday as popular American singer Beyonce is expected to join the rally. And in Bangladesh, Sanatan Jagran Mancha organized a massive rally in Chattogram on Friday calling for minority rights and security. The rally pressed for the implementation of an eight-point demand including a speedy trial tribunal for cases involving the persecution of minorities, the enactment of a minority protection law and the formation of a minority affairs ministry. Members of the Hindu community from Chattogram, Cox's Bazar and Hill districts called on the interim government to expedite the eight-point demand list. Speakers at the rally criticized what they call the government's inaction in prosecuting those responsible for recent attacks on Hindu properties and places of worship. And at least 76 people have been killed in central and northern Philippines after a tropical storm Trami battered the country, triggering landslides and flooding that trapped residents on their roofs and displaced thousands of people. As the storm leaves the country on Friday with a trail of destruction, state forecasters are raising the rare possibility that it could make a U-turn next week as it is pushed back by high-pressure winds developing in the South China Sea. Although Trami did not strengthen into a typhoon, it dumped unusually heavy rains in some regions, including some that saw one to two months' worth of rainfall in just 24 hours. 
inundating communities with flash floods. All right, still to come on this edition of DD India Live. India slams Pakistan for raking Kashmir issue at a United Nations Security Council debate, calls it a mischievous provocation. And New Zealand on top in Pune Test, India look to bounce back with quick wickets. Complex issues, hidden agendas, twists and turns, strategic games. We think all dots are linked. We just need to connect them. Join me every week as I connect the dots to unravel hidden designs and statecraft, mysteries and decode issues that matter to you. Watch Connecting the Dots with me at these times on DD India. Welcome back. You're watching DD India Live. I'm Abhishek Mahajan. India slammed Pakistan for raising the Kashmir at a United Nations Security Council debate, calling it a mischievous provocation based on their tested tactic of spreading misinformation. India thanks Switzerland for convening the crucial debate on women building peace in a changing environment, exercising its right to reply during the UN Security Council debate on women building peace in a changing environment. India called out Islamabad over the deplorable condition of women from minority communities in Pakistan. Addressing the UN Security Council debate, India's permanent representative to the UN in New York, Parvataneni Harish, spoke about the honours received by Indian women peacekeepers serving in different parts of the world. It is despicable yet entirely predictable that one delegation has chosen to indulge in mischievous provocation based on their tried and tested tactic of spreading misinformation and disinformation. It's completely misplaced to indulge in such political propaganda at this important annual debate. We are well aware that the condition of women belonging to minority communities, notably Hindus, Sikhs and Christians in that country, remains deplorable. An estimated thousand women of these minority communities, as per data of the Human Rights Commission of that particular country, are subject to abduction, forced religious conversions and forced marriages every year. Now, India and Germany co-chaired the 7th Intergovernmental Consultations in New Delhi on Friday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said India-Germany ties are a transformational partnership of two capable and empowered democracies. He said the partnership is contributing to building a stable, secure and sustainable future for the global community and humanity. Both countries exchanged several agreements and joined declarations of intent focusing on enhanced bilateral ties. More in this report. Co-chairing the 7th Intergovernmental Consultations in New Delhi with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi highlighted that increasing cooperation in areas including defence, technology, energy and sustainable development have become symbols of mutual trust between India and Germany. He noted that India-Germany ties are a transformational partnership of two capable and empowered democracies and is contributing to building a stable, secure and sustainable future for the global community and humanity. This is not a transactional relation. This is a transformational partnership of two smart and smart democracies. एक ऐसी पार्टनरशिप जो वैश्विक जगत और मानवता के स्टेबल सिक्योर और सस्टेनेबल फ्यूचर के निर्माण में योगदान दे रही है पीएम मोदी अंडरलाइन दैट द वर्ल्ड इज पासिंग थ्रू एन इरा ऑफ टेंशंस कॉन्फ्लिक्ट्स एंड अनसर्टेनिटी एंड देयर आर सीरियस कंसर्न्स रिगार्डिंग द रूल ऑफ लॉ एंड फ्रीडम ऑफ नेविगेशन इन द इंडो-पैसिफिक रीजन इन सच अ टाइम अ स्ट्रेटजिक पार्टनरशिप बिटवीन द टू नेशंस हैज इमर्ज्ड एज अ स्ट्रांग एंकर एक्सीलेंसी विश्व तनाव संघर्षों और अनिश्चितता के दौर से गुजर रहा है इंडो पैसिफिक क्षेत्र में रूल ऑफ लॉ और फ्रीडम ऑफ नेविगेशन को लेकर भी गंभीर चिंताएं हैं ऐसे समय में भारत और जर्मनी की स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप का मजबूत एंकर के रूप में उभरी है 
PM Modi said that India and Germany agree on the need for reforms in various multilateral institutions including the United Nations Security Council and both will continue to actively cooperate in this direction. PM Modi added that both nations are working together to fight against terrorism. India and Germany exchanged several agreements and joint declarations of intent in the presence of PM Modi and Chancellor Scholz which include the mutual legal assistance treaty in criminal matters exchange and mutual protection of classified information indo-german green hydrogen roadmap roadmap on innovation and technology mou on cooperation in the field of skill development and vocational education and training joint declaration of intent in the field of employment and labor joint declaration of intent for joint cooperation in research and development on advanced materials and joint declaration of intent on indo-german green urban mobility partnership for all earlier the prime minister welcomed chancellor scholz at his residence the prime minister expressed his happiness over the meeting saying that the discussions held on diverse range of issues will add momentum to india germany friendship he also added that the two nations have a strong track record of developmental cooperation and both leaders agreed to maintain the renewed momentum in india germany ties Bureau report DD India And as the landfall process of the severe cyclonic storm Dana tore through Indian eastern state Orisha coast on Thursday midnight heavy rain fall with gusty winds lashed parts of southern west bengal as per the indian med department heavy to very heavy rainfall predicted in parts of orisha west bengal and jharkhand for the next few days flights and train services restored in both the affected states The restoration and relief work that began following Cyclone Dana's landfall on the Odisha coast in early hours of Friday still continues in the coastal areas of the state. The people of Dhamra, Bhadrak and adjoining areas in coastal Odisha witnessed turbulent seas, gusty winds and rainfall as an impact of the cyclone. Sports updates now will start with cricket. The BCCI announced India's squad for the upcoming Border Gavaskar Trophy Test Series against Australia on Friday. Rohit Sharma will lead the team while Jasprit Bumrah has been named vice captain for the five match series. Mohammad Shami still recovering from an injury has been left out of the squad. Additionally, Kuldeep Yadav was unavailable for selection due to a chronic issue. Akshar Patel could not find a place. However, all-rounder Nitish Kumar Reddy has made the cut along with Abhimanyu Iswaran who is expected to be team's backup opener. Washington Sundar has also earned a spot in the 18 man squad. And talking about Pune Test India will look to bounce back while New Zealand will continue to build on to their strong lead on day 3 of the second test in Pune after Kiwis close play with 301 run lead on day 2. New Zealand looked on top as captain Tom Latham helped visitors lead go beyond 300 for India Washington Sundar continues his good form with the ball as he has picked up four wickets while Ravi Chandra Ashwin took one in the second innings captain Latham scored 86 while which put New Zealand in a firm position now India have a daunting task ahead of them as they will be up against a record chase and they will be batting fourth on this wicket India have not lost a test series against in fact after 2012 at home and have never lost a test series at home to new zealand and real madrid trio vinicius junior jude bellingham and dani carvajal joined rodri as front runners for the ballon d'or for the first time since 2003 neither cristiano ronaldo nor lionel messi have been included in the nominees for the coveted award Real have a total of 7 players nominated including Kylian Mbappe, Jude Bellingham and Brazil's Vinicius Jr among the other nominees. Euro 2024 winners Spain have 6 players nominated including 17-year-old Barcelona's Lamine Yamal along with Nico Williams, Alejandro Grimaldo, Dani Olmo, Rodri and Dani Carvajal. Euro runners up England have 5 other nominees apart from Bellingham, Harry Kane, Bukayo Saka, Declan Rice, Cole Palmer and Phil Foden. The 2024 Ballon d'Or Awards ceremony to crown the world's best player will take place on October 28th in Paris. Well, that's all for this edition of DD India Live. But do let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. For those on the go, you can get all the latest news and updates from India and across the world on DD India mobile app. The app is available on both Android and iOS. Scan the QR code on the screen to download now. And we'll be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. I'm Abhishek. From all of us here in Delhi, thanks for watching DD India Live.